So I'm going to talk to you today about Baltimore. Hopefully everybody from DC knows that I spent City on the way to New York or Philly. Um, and specifically, I'm going to talk to you about this park, Glings Falls Lincoln Park, uh, which is in West Baltimore. And more, even more specifically, I'm going to talk about the forest there. So what I want you to know is that um, the city parks are protected as open space, but the forest within the park is not. So the Friends of Glings Falls Lincoln Park are seeking to add formal protection. One of the benefits of doing that would be that they can join, that the park can join the uh, Old Growth Forest Network. Um, and the easiest way to do that, uh, we've decided after going back and forth on all, all kinds of stuff, is to uh, pass in a city ordinance which would protect the park. This is the Glings Falls, this is a view down a hill, and you can see that it's uh, Stream Valley Park. Um, so Glings Falls Lincoln Park, again, uh, we, we call it Baltimore's Wilderness Park. Um, it's one of the largest municipally owned forests in, in, on the East Coast. It's about a thousand acres, 84% of that is, uh, is forest. And there's all kinds of other activities besides the natural stuff going on. There's uh, Chesapeake Outward Bound has uh, there, a campus there. Uh, there's a nature center and a, a preschool there. And in the warm months, you have um, Chesapeake and Allegheny steamers run uh, mini trains on a loop there. So the Friends of Glings Falls Lincoln Park is a volunteer organization which was founded in 1984 uh, as a nonprofit, and it's basically it acts as the voice of the of the public um, when Baltimore City Recs and Parks wants to make a big decision about the park. They have to go to the Friends. Um, yeah, so they, uh, they try to fill their board from the surrounding communities, and uh, but sometimes this is more difficult in some neighborhoods than it is in others. Um, and there's all kinds of activities uh, that as a, a grassroots organization, environmental organization, uh, you, you would expect. So now we'll talk about the Old Growth Forest Network, which is a national nonprofit uh, which States has its mission uh, to designate one forest in every county in the United States. Uh, there's currently 189. You can see them as the green dots on there uh, on the map on the left. And in order to join the Old Growth Forest Network, you have to be, the forest has to be open to the public, protected without, with no, and it will never be locked under this protection. Uh, and it needs to have a network of people that are um, devoted to protecting the park. Um, Old Growth, and from their website, they, they describe themselves as being the only national organization focused solely on identifying, protecting, and restoring old growth forests. So, if, uh, so what is this Baltimore Forest Preserve that I'm talking about? Basically, this is a map of the park inside of this purple or magenta line. Uh, that's the park. Um, and then this brown hatching, that is the area of the forest. And we're trying to protect all 842 acres of that forest. And the protection would be Again, from protect protection from logging and protection from de development, so the city can't build a school there in the forest. Um, and right, and the protection would also last in perpetuity. And uh, but right, so the protection is there's a certain amount of uh, flexibility to it because it allows for things that are already existing, like the roads and the buildings and uh, the utility lines they can be they can be maintained or maintained and repaired in place and then you can also intervene with invasive species um, so why would we want to do this if you look at this this is a map uh, of data from the Maryland Department of Natural Resources of the ecosystem the total ecosystem services they've estimated that for every parcel in the state um, 
in dollars per year. So uh, if you look here, I mean, basically the big, the, the big blue and green blob over here in West Baltimore, that is what we're trying to preserve. We're trying to save the forest there. Um, and so the DNR's estimate is that it's $2.3 million of total ecosystem services provided per year. Um, so included in that, in those ecosystem services are uh, protection of the, you know, it's the critical habitat for wildlife, um, it's the, the cooling of the air, it's the cleaning of the air, uh, Basically, you can describe the park as, as or, or the forest as the green lungs of the city. Um, it's also a stream valley park, um, and this landscape absorbs and filters the water. So, continuing this rationale um, for preservation of the forest, uh, if we talk about the forest interiors, this is a reanalysis of the state of the DNRs. Uh, forest interior dwelling species analysis. Basically, they're looking for forest interiors and they define it as being inside of this buffer from the edge areas. Um, and so basically these areas are critical for birds, uh, for their nesting and for breeding. Um, it, it's basically the deep forest and uh, we're trying to protect it, you know, don't further fragment it uh, by putting in new roads or new pipelines or whatever. <clears throat> and if you're wondering, well, why am I keep talking about pipelines? This is a pipeline that the, ga the local gas company built um, in the last 10 years, and they cut down 16 acres of forest to do it. And uh, there's also this pipeline. This is a road, an access road, uh, for the Baltimore City Department of Public Works to get to their sewer system uh, to inspect the, to do video inspection of the lines. Uh, so some additional examples of GIS driven work that can help uh, a small nonprofit like the Friends of Boone's Falls Lincoln Park. Um, so the park previously had a very nice map and that map uh, unfortunately there was a lot of erosion in the park. This is a stream valley park and these were trails that were on old roads and so these old roads of course are going to erode away over time and so basically I went back and I remapped the trails and uploaded them to OpenStreetMap. If you don't know OpenStreetMap is comparable to the Wikipedia of maps. Uh, it's very easy to edit and uh, the crowd surveys it to make sure that people aren't vandalizing the data. Um, and the other good thing about OpenStreetMap is that it provides the, uh, the source of the data for All Trails is base map. All Trails is a mobile phone app that people use to go and find, you know, a nice place to go for a hike or go for a jog or whatever. Um, so if you edit OpenStreetMap in about a month or so, it will be propagated into the, the All Trails base map. And another thing which, you know, you'd think a thousand acre park would have uh, a trail map for its, you know, trail sign for its, uh, for its trails, for its 18 miles of trails, but there wasn't one until we got this map produced in two places, and so it's now it's in two places. And this is, let me, like it, uh, where's the mouse? Sorry. Let me see if we all... Oh, here it goes. So anyway, this is an animation uh, that I made from uh, the land records and the old maps. Basically, this park was not just some big estate that somebody gave to the city. This is something that was assembled over 120 years. Um, and, you know, you can see that. And, right, from 69 parcels. Uh, finishing in uh, 2017 was the most recent. All right, that's all I have. And if anybody has questions, I'll be happy to entertain them.
anyone have questions? One or two questions? Yes, what the feedback is that we've gotten from the Parks Department in the city. So, we have a city councilman who has proposed the ordinance, and uh, it's currently with the city's law department, and they're taking it to planning to see if it overlaps with anything the planning has. But, so there's different divisions inside of, uh, Forest, uh, inside of Parks and Rec, uh, one of them is forestry, and the forestry people told us, you know, go for it, preserve everything, um, and we haven't really heard anything from the rest of the people yet, but, uh, so we're kind of, we've been in a holding loop for, you know, since September or whatever, but, you know, it's moving into speedy government, we just heard that the law department was handling it and passing it on the permits, so.